Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anovella and today is Friday and normally on Friday I do a deep dive into a book or an author but um, I've changed the, my, my mind a bit because I really want to do a deep dive into the works of an author but I don't know enough yet so I will push that forward to Friday, next Friday and uh, today I will just do uh, a check-in. Uh, I want to talk about, on next Friday, I want to talk about Anais Nin. Anais Nin is a um, French-Cuban author who lived in the States for a very long time and she mostly wrote erotica and uh, that's a bit of a poor choice from her part because she was really, really, really good in writing. She was a gifted, talented woman. And I want to talk about her work and uh, her life in general. That's for next Friday. Now, I've made a little mistake for the Classics and Company. I thought that uh, Dangerous Liaisons was only like 200 pages, but it's more like 400 pages, I'm sorry. <laughs> I must have been mistaken because I th it's 178 or 6 uh, letters and uh, because it's an epistolary novel. We have a discord and uh, people are already engaging and we are uh, over 50 people already which is... <laughs> It, it'll be fun though. It will will be really fun. I've ordered a copy too. I first have my had my uh, Dutch copy, but it's a very old translation, so I've ordered one and I will receive that tomorrow or Monday. So I will see which I don't even know which translation it is. So I will talk about that uh, a little bit uh, later on uh, Monday. Maybe I will do a, an intro video. And on Sunday I would like to do. Um, my first live uh, coffee clutch because I really want to talk to you. It's always through messages or whatever and I re I'm better when I'm one-on-one -on -one to talk about uh, the books that I love and uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be so much more fun. I don't know when this will start. It will be probably six or seven my time. Uh, in the evening because yeah tomorrow I'm leaving for Brussels and I'll only come back in the morning hopefully I will have had some sleep but I can't guarantee you that anyway I have read a couple of books I've read this physical copy Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Cosby now, this is about, um, it starts with two men that are a couple, uh, they have a child and they are being killed. They are killed because of their gay, maybe, or another reason, doesn't matter. Their fathers come together and they are both ex-convicts and um, one is black, the other is white and yeah, they have to get over their differences and they want to take revenge for what happened. This is not a book about gay love. This is not a book about grieving or, um, yeah, it's not even, there's not even much character building. It's just a good pulpy thriller. Um, this is, if... <laughs> It's not written by E.M. Forster, but by uh, more like a Quentin Tarantino kind of person. So yeah, it's all about revenge and, and uh, a lot of violence, but I actually quite enjoy it. So yeah, for me it was, it was a fun read because I didn't have the expectancy of, of being a, a, a literary work. I knew it was trashy pulp and uh, yeah, I, I needed that at the moment. So. There you go. So if you want to read it, it's just read it as good fun, but don't, there's no moral message behind it. On the contrary. So yeah, no, it's, it's, 
it's gripping, but it's also uh, fun to read. Then I read mostly ebooks, so I read uh, Kokoro, and it was written by Natsume Soseki. Kokoro is about a young man who meets an older an older man uh, who doesn't have uh, who is married, but he doesn't have children and. He calls the older man, the older man, a sensei, as a sort of teacher. Uh, he visits him regularly, and he really um, takes yeah, his advice. He goes for him for advice and everything. He sees him uh, as a sort of a father figure because the young man is normally from um, uh, the countryside, but he is now in. I don't remember the name of the city anymore because it isn't really important. He is in the city because he studies there and he's a really good student, a gifted student. But yeah, he misses a father figure and Sensei is his father figure. But then his real father is becoming ill and he is torn between those two old men. And uh, yeah, this is the story about that respect for elderly and and to do what you have to do and to do where your heart lays and um, uh, also about uh, family dynamics and sometimes people taking advantage of family members. Uh, it's also about heritage and and uh, and and inheritance and yeah, it's um, it's a very interesting work. It's written in the beginning of the twentieth century, and yeah, not nothing much happens. But I really enjoyed the pace. I really enjoyed the the storyline, and yeah, I liked being in that world for uh, a while. What I do saw, uh, what I did see was that on Goodreads, my English speaking friends gave this book a whole lot less um, appreciation than the Dutch speaking ones. And I think maybe, maybe that, that has to do with a translation or the quality of translation. Um, for me, when I read it, it felt really contemporary and uh, really rich and full and very um, respectful and written at heart and I really enjoyed it. So maybe that come, doesn't come through in English, I don't know. I Or maybe it's cultural differences, that's also possible. But I really, really enjoyed Kokoro. Then what else did I read? A Woman That's Finished. I also want to talk about that because it's very important. So maybe I will do that Wednesday, next Wednesday. Um, because I'm, I'm, I couldn't read for a couple of days after that. I, I really had to digest the story and um, the impact it had on me because it was flabbergasting to me that this was written in 1909. It felt like something from the 70s, you know, when the, the feminism started emerging and it was, oh, it was really powerful. So yeah, um, I will definitely dive deeper into that one too. Then I read Sins and Innocence by Burhan Sunmez. Uh, I believe he's a Turkish author or Iranian. It's one of the two because um, this story is about two refugees living in England, studying in England literature, and uh, the boy likes to tell stories and the girl uh, has quite a uh, past. So uh, she's from Iran and the boy is from Turkey. And when they meet, uh, when they're talking to each other, it's a very contemporary novel. And then when they tell the stories of what happened uh, back in their countries, it is it has a whole different atmosphere. And that's wonderful to read. Although, uh, and there are some very shocking uh, things that are being revealed and, and horrible things, uh, but it missed a 
it, it was cut short in a way. It didn't feel rounded. The story didn't feel rounded. So it was only three stars for me. Um, although I, I really enjoyed the, the beginning and so, but the ending didn't do it justice. It was like, it felt like the author didn't f know what to do or how to end it in a way. It, it felt a bit messy at the end. Um, it was it was good, but n not good enough to give it f more than three stars. I received, to my big surprise, the newest Brad Easton Ellis, uh, The Shards. So I have, I have it in Dutch. So I will read that one and then talk about that one too. And uh, yeah, on Monday I start reading. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> Dangerous Liaisons too. And then also um, I will start with uh, our Patricia Highsmith mission. So we are going to read uh, her complete works uh, throughout the year. Me and Ollie from Criminally. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, it is uh, a wonderful novelist, and, and yeah, I really want to learn more about her, uh, her, her writing, and not only the persona. So yeah, that's uh, it. I uh, that's all I have to say. It's not much, I think. I wish you a wonderful two last days in 2022, and I hope. 2023 will be even better. Um, me, I'm going to friends in Brussels and uh, hope I have a good time and uh, I hope you do too. I hope you have some friends or family to celebrate it with or a pet, doesn't matter. If you, along, as long as you don't feel alone, then you'll be fine. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.